Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is September 9th, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, schools in Germany are ordering teenage girls not to wear mini skirts or shorts to avoid offending Muslim immigrants pouring into the country. Germany plans to accept 800,000 new immigrants before the end of the year and 500,000 a year from then on. Meanwhile, Donald Trump says we have to accept migrants here in the USA because they're living in hell in Syria. I hate the concept of it, but on a humanitarian basis with what's happening, you have to. Plus, the federal government is threatening to kick miners off their land to expand Area 51. And the food babe reveals shocking emails from Monsanto Corporation. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. One of the hot topics, not just here in the States, but around the world right now, is people migrating from place to place. And many of them have a very legitimate reason to do so. And we'll talk about that more in our next article. But for right now, I want to talk about some of the culture clashes that are happening because of people migrating. And now we see that German schools are ordering girls not to wear short skirts as to avoid offending Muslim students. And it says a school sent out a letter to parents advising them of a new security measure after a migrant shelter was opened at the school's nearby gym. Parents were warned that children should not wear revealing clothes for fear of misunderstandings that could lead to attacks by the migrants. Now, let's stop right there. It's one thing to have people come into your area, you know, not necessarily your country, but people can move from place to place because of some type of natural disaster. People move from you know, Oklahoma to Texas or whatever the case may be. But with that, if you get someplace and you find out because of what somebody is wearing that may cause them to have an attack on you, that does not fly at all. You can't just say, well, in Oklahoma, we wear uh, the, the Sooner colors. You guys are wearing Texas colors. We're going to attack you. No, you can't do that. And it's the same thing with this uh, type of uh, situation that we see going on in Germany. Now, of course, as I always say when I talk about uh, other religions, um, not all Muslims are this way. You got plenty of peaceful Muslims. They have no issue with anybody, myself and Joe Biggs had a chance to go to the uh, Stand with the Prophet rally in Garland, Texas. This isn't the one that got shot up. This was the one before that. And we met nice Muslim people out there. They were peaceful people. The first thing they said to us on our cameras was, well, we, don't con we, uh, we condemn the actions of Charlie Hebdo. We condemn the actions of Boko Haram, all these other groups who are out there doing these horrific things. So not all Muslims are like that. So now as we continue on with our article, Children are also told that derogatory and racial marks would not be tolerated. And yes, I can understand that. You shouldn't have uh, people throwing racial inserts, uh, insults at you because of your, uh, your race, your religion, or anything else. But it reminds me, when we're talking about these measures and what they're banning and what they're not allowing people to say or do as far as things that don't offend people or shouldn't offend people just the way somebody is dressed, it reminds me of what's going on right here in the United States of America because we've seen in places like California that telling the kids not to wear American flag t-shirts in the United States of America. Well, it may offend somebody from another country. Well, it's like, well, this is the United States of America where we have an American flag flying high. Why can I not wear this American flag t-shirt? But that's kind of the state of affairs that we're in right now. And as we're talking, continued about these things that are going on in the schools, we've also seen while they're telling kids, 
over in Germany not to wear the short skirts. Here in the States, if a young man wants to use the girl's bathroom, that's perfectly fine. We've seen that become some of a normal thing. And, you know, when you have little kids, little five-year-old, six-year-old, it's probably not that big of a deal. But when you get up to the high school ranks and you get all these uh, various people with hormones and uh, all these other things going on, having the boys and the girls use the same locker room is just a recipe for disaster. Now, but let's go back to the migrant issue, people coming over the borders. Now, as I said earlier, some people are traveling because of very real uh, circumstances that they're trying to flee from, whether it's uh, poverty, illness, safety concerns, because not just the people leaving places like Syria, but you also have people down in Central and South America that are still being affected negatively by the Contras and the things that happen on uh, things that happen down there. So I can understand people coming to various countries, wanting to leave those countries and go to a better situation. But the issue that we're having is we have so many people that are going into uh, communities such as what we saw in McAllen, Texas. And it's fine if you have a church, a private organization or private individuals who choose to pin to uh, house these people uh, pending their trials. I have no issue with that. But the problem is they had so many people coming in there is draining resources from the city of McAllen itself. And then they said, well, yeah, we pretty much tapped out on our emergency management fund, which is to say if they had a a flood or tornado, some type of other natural disaster. They wouldn't really have had any money to take care of that. Also, it was in the local news down in that area that uh, if some type of disaster did occur, you know, flood or whatever, they would evacuate the people who came over the border first. And I was like, well, I have no issue with you getting them out because, of course, you don't want to leave anybody behind. But who's going to go get the people from the homeless shelter? You know, <laughs> that, that wasn't a priority for them. Or what about people in temporary housing such as trailer parks who may also be low income and dependent on public transportation? Who's going to get them? Like, well, we'll just leave them to their own devices. So with that said, Trump has come out and said that we have to bring migrants into our country because they're fleeing situations like what's going on in Syria. Now, do you object to migrants who are getting out of the Middle East and North Africa, do you object to them coming to the USA? I hate the concept of it, but on a humanitarian basis with what's happening, you have to. You know, this was started by President Obama when he didn't go in and do the job when he should have, when he drew the line in the sand, which turned out to be a very artificial line. But, you know, it's, uh, it's living in hell in Syria. There's no question about it. They're living in hell. And as I stated before, some people are trying to flee for very legitimate reasons. They have real concerns about their safety. But I think this is a situation where we're putting a Band-Aid on something where we should be trying to avoid making the incision altogether. Because yes, there is a lot of problems going on in Syria, and I'm not saying that the United States or Western governments are the cause, but they are a contributing factor. When you look at the point where we have uh, the Syrian rebels, many of whom aren't even Syrian, uh, many of them have sworn allegiance to Al-Qaeda, although we continue to fund these guys to go out and do these things. And then we see people like the White House, they come out and they say, uh, Assad has crossed the red line. He's using chemical weapons on his own people, even though the video that they showed on numerous mainstream media outlets here in the States had the Al Qaeda watermark on the video. It's, <laughs> it's like you take something from Fox News, like, oh, this is a CBS piece. You're like, no, it has the Fox News logo on it. It's kind of that same deal. So with that said, the, the Syrian rebels, the Al Qaeda rebels, have committed at least one chemical attack because they even made a video documenting that fact, but we completely ignore that. So yes, we are contributing to this. It's the same thing like the Contras down in Central and South America. People are flooding here because of those ill effects, but if we weren't doing that stuff to begin with, people wouldn't have to leave their homes. I don't want people to come here because they can't stay at home. If they want to stay home, we should be able to put resources towards that or not put negative resources that drive them out of their homes. Because I saw an article, I think it was a couple months ago, I sent it to a Syrian girl, Mimi Alaham, or you know, whatever her name is. Uh, she has several different names, kind of like Puff Daddy, but partisan girl, all that. But I sent her this uh, document talking about how a lot of the Syrian refugees are coming to Dallas now. And she said, it's terrible. I really wish uh, the United States would stop doing things that force people out of their homes. And I do agree. Long story short, Let's make an environment where people can stay in their own homes and not have to leave because of the actions of the United States government or other governments for that, uh, for that cause. And as we talk about the alienations of uh, Syria and Central and South America, let's talk about the alienation of the United States of America. And we see more than half of adults have diabetes or prediabetes. The study of U.S. government health surveys examined the prevalence of diabetes among 26,000 U.S. adults between 1988 and 2012. According to the study in the Journal of the American Medical Association, 
Up to 14% of U.S. adults had diabetes in 2011 to 2012. And what's even scarier, many of them didn't even know about their condition, which is to say these uh, conditions are on the rise. And there are many contributing factors as to what causes diabetes, but one that cannot be denied is your food, what type of food you eat. The type of food that you don't eat, I guess, is also a factor in there as well. And to this, we have Vani Hari, the food babe. She's been on our show several times documenting a good number of different things. She's gone up against uh, Monsanto, Chick-fil-A, uh, Subway, many other places as well. But now she's putting her focus back on Monsanto with the article. The shocking email from Monsanto and why I submitted a four-year request, and this concerns Dr. Kevin Fulton. And she says, newly discovered emails revealed that Fulton received a $25,000 unrestricted grant from Monsanto. And he even wrote to a Monsanto executive, I'm glad to sign on to whatever you like or write whatever you like. And I promise a solid return on the investment. Now, the reason this is interesting is because Fulton was writing some very nasty hit pieces about Vani Hari, and he's, you know, attacking her for this or for that, as many people have. And this is a very interesting document that she was able to get her hands on because it shows that this guy is pretty much bought and paid for by Monsanto. And he even said, oh, let's look at this quote once again. I'm glad to sign on to whatever you like or write whatever you like, and I promise a solid return on your investment. Now, this doesn't particularly uh, mention Bonnie Hari by name, but it also goes on to point out in the article that he had denied several times, a uh, nine that she has documented here, that he said he had no connection to Monsanto. And I'm pretty sure a big corporation like Monsanto isn't exactly that. People like the food babe are out there operating and doing various things. But it just goes to show you that a lot of people think when it comes to politicians or scientists or many other people that they can't be bought and paid for, well, yes, they can. Because it happens all the time, especially in politics. You see these guys, whether it's for money or power or they're being blackmailed, they may do something that's against the uh, better wishes or the better concerns of the general populace. And uh, scientists or anybody else are not immune from such endeavors. Yeah, they have student loans to pay back just like anybody else. So at the end of the day, they may take that check and do something that isn't exactly in your best interest. So you can't uh, just say, well, this guy went to school for eight years, so he's above reproach. Now, he's human like anybody else. I'm not saying that that's exactly uh, what happened with this guy, but I'm just using that as an example, somewhat of a bellwether. Now, let's talk about weathering the storm of the gun grab, because we have many people who want to remove all guns. They say anytime a tragedy happens, let's take all the guns, let's ban all the guns. Well, you can't really do that because we saw this recently, was it last month when they had the shooting at the recruiting stations where you have the big gun-free zone sign with bullets wrapped all the way around it, didn't stop a single shot. And then on top of that, we saw one of the service members pull out his concealed carry and they were even threatening to charge him for defending his life. So with that said, Bad guys are always going to find some way to do harm. A uh, case in point, I believe it was last week. I can't recall exactly where it was, but I saw an article about another mother, and I stress another mother, who chose to drown her children in a bathtub. It's a horrible situation, but nobody's going to ban bathtubs or bath water. And you say, that's ridiculous. Why would you do that? There are millions or billions of mothers or who, who wash their children, who bathe their children every day without incident. And I would say you are correct with that. There are millions of gun owners in the United States of America who have never shot a single person. Many people haven't even shot uh, a deer or a squirrel or anything like that. Then uh, we had uh, Mr. Pittman, Carl Pittman on, who we're going to show an interview of later on, who was on the Alex Jones show. And he said, if I pull out my firearm right now and place it on this table, it's just going to lay here. This table is going to fall apart before this gun accidentally goes off and shoots anything. And that's exactly right. Guns don't walk out the closet at night and just go kill people. You need somebody with ill intent or somebody who's just completely negligent. And now we see that gun owners of America have endorsed Ted Cruz for president. And it basically breaks down how Ted Cruz is against the UN arms trade treaty, which would implement a full gun owner registration if it was ratified by the United States Senate. Now, at this point, I'm not convinced of any particular presidential candidate. I'm definitely not going to try to convince you who to vote for. There's some people I may say you, you, you probably shouldn't go for, but as far as the ultimate dom nomination, I'm not exactly sure. And of course, when you get to uh, big uh, national politics, there are a 